just got absolutely met nailed by people the masters make, or whatever that is. Hi, it's Double1975, and today I'm bringing you a game parade from The Crucible. This was us doing Brian's Call to Arms. It's actually Iron Banner, um, and uh, so it was just Clash this week, but it, you know, it was okay. A bit of fun. Uh, this is me, and I don't know if it's three or four of us carrying Brian through his Call to Arms. We were doing this while waiting to get the, our raid crew together to do the raid again. Um, I'm not actually going to be bringing you any footage of the raid this week, because just for various reasons, um, I look through the footage I've got. And it is quite amusing, but it's just not its not quite there. Um, so I might take it away and edit it and do a, a raid highlight at some point, but not today. What I want to talk to you about today is Destiny 2's creators getting into a little bit of hot water with their throttling of XP to try and make you buy more bright engrams. So bright engrams unlock um, at a certain level point. Um, and use those bright engrams with the lovely Tess here voiced by Claudia Black from Farscape and you get emotes, camos, all sorts of bullshit cosmetic items none of it has an in-game effect other than to make your character look shiny nothing is amazing, nothing, you know, there's no hidden nuclear warhead weapon or massively overpowered variant gun so I am on the whole fine with that, I don't mind cosmetics in games I remember when COD first put cosmetic items into Black Ops 2. I didn't mind it too much because you saw a camo, you brought a camo. I'm not keen on the idea that it's not, you don't get what you pay for. Uh, there is a loot crate element to it, um, which I find distasteful. Uh, but as long as it's cosmetic items only and I don't have to buy them to stay competitive, I'm not really that worried. It's not on par with what EA have done with Battlefront 2, which is um, abhorrent and a business practice that's completely shady and really, really wonky. You can't justify um, putting pay-to-win stuff in AAA titles. I just, it's really, do I would seriously love to sit down at a shareholders meeting when the person's going, yes, but we're selling games as a service and therefore... We feel these people should have to part with money on top of money on top of money. Um, so we're not going to give them any of uh, this stuff easily in-game. We're going to make them pay for it. Uh, by doing this, by delaying the progression down so they would have to play eight hours a day, seven days a week for two and a half years to unlock everything. And a shareholder going, oh yeah, I'm sure that'd be brilliant. That'll make loads of profits. That won't get us in any trouble, will it? Oh, no, 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 it won't get us in any trouble. And um, Fortune 3 8 has got them in a lot of hot water. I would love it if they lost the Disney license. Uh, 3 billion knocked off their share price, and um, the shame and scorn of Disney is quite funny. Um, but if they bring the Star Wars brand into disrepute, or Disney's brand into disrepute, um, they would be in breach of their contract, their license agreement with Disney. And I think they have done both those things. And I think Disney would very well be in their rights to cancel the contract and force EA to stop making Star Wars games. That would be hilarious if they did that. EA would just, oh, that would be an embarrassment to EA, something chronic. Um, my friend, a friend of mine is actually telling me Battlefront 2 is pretty good and uh, much better than the first one and worth getting. Um, his only complaint is he's the only one of us that's got it and no one's playing it with him. Uh, so I've said that I, I won't get it because I just don't have time for another game. Um, I said this about Call of Duty and what with Fortnite, the possibility of PUBG, Elite Dangerous and Destiny 2 I really don't see myself having more time for other games um, but Battlefront's really suffered sales wise because of its shady business practices and what they've done in Destiny 2 is bad but as it's just cosmetic items and uh, anyone who didn't think they were throttling XP to make you um, you know, try and encourage you to spend money on bright engrams this is the way games have done it for years. That's not uh, anything new or different. Those sort of practices have been around in gaming for a long, long time. Um, unfortunately. It's the murky waters we live in, the murky world we live in of video game developers trying to milk every penny out of us for profit margins. Well, you know, they make, they make a product, they want to make money off it. This is the sort of thing that's going to happen. Um, and I'm glad that the community f has made a to stand against Battlefront 2 and I'm glad that EA have got themselves in trouble and some companies made sort of hopefully uh, look at their business practices and decide on more 
consumer friendly models or may even be forced to if they don't because um, regulation may step in anyway that's it for this video I'm gonna leave you some clips of Brian talking so you can see how he got on his call to arms <laughs> that's what I like to hear <laughs> Strike as one, that's two. Oh, I didn't use my super at all. Sound tactics and improvisation that I've not seen since I. Well, that was excellent. I've excellent. actually done me call of arms as well, so that was good. So we can come out of this now, can't we? Europe. Yeah, very well. That's nice. Thanks, lads. That was good. <laughs>